Hey guys, Attorney Walter Not. Please remember to like, subscribe, leave five star reviews. The big one of all of them, leave five star reviews, ring the bell, blah, blah, blah. Let's get right to this video. This video, uh, it was written out. I didn't pay attention to it at first. And I thought about it and I realized, holy cow, this is like very accurate and also to some degree a new way of thinking that essentially the symptoms related to impairments that cause the most severe resulting harm or damage to the human body. It's not always the prime impairment, the starting impairment. It's the secondary symptoms that can often cause somebody to go from a mild, moderate person of disability to a severely disabled or extremely disabled individual. Let's go through this National Geographic article, rheumatoid arthritis, talking about it, uh, specifically by, uh, let's see if it's on here, uh, Connie Chang, here's the title, The End of Inflammation, New Approach Could Treat Dozens of Diseases. Just keep an open mind with this because they're talking about essentially dealing with something that everybody just does not put a lot of thought into, which is inflammation and the extremely severe results that come from it. People can't breathe, their legs fill with blood, their feet uh, you know, can't get proper flow to them. Uh, their heart has difficulty getting blood from one spot to the next. Inflammation of the brain is deadly. All these things are important to consider. Let's go into it right now. Cancer, aging, and severe COVID-19 have all been linked to damage from inflammation. I know I felt that with the lungs. Horrible. When I had COVID, it was miserable. Now scientists are flipping their focus to find new drugs that may revolutionize treatments. Growing up in Atlanta, Georgia, Lauren Finney, and this was published March 4th, 2022, so like a week ago. Lauren Finney Harden had always had allergies, but after she moved to New York City for her first job in 2007, inflammation just exploded throughout her body. I had insane full body rashes and strange gastro issues. I get massive burps that made me feel like I needed to throw up, but nothing would come up but air. She says eventually she was diagnosed with lupus, a disease in which the immune system attacks the body's own tissues and organs. She was put on a drug called pregnizone uh, that tamps down that inflammation that she was having. Uh, but the cure at times felt worse than the disease. I looked for months. Uh, uh, oh, I looked for, uh, there's an issue there, for months to be pregnant at all the time, at all times, Finney Harden said. And I get cold sores every other week. My body could not fight off anything. Immune uh, deficient uh, immune issues, etc. Inflammation. Forget all the primary impairments with this gig. Just think inflammation. How has inflammation affected my impairment? How did that make me more severe than I was before? Just that's the primary thought. That is your legal argument right there. Keep that in mind. Finney Hardin's experience is unfortunately a common one with traditional autoimmune treatments like pregnizone abroad. Immunosuppressant, pregnizone works by disabling the production of pro-inflammatory molecules that are crucial for the body to mount an immune defense. So while pregnizone and drugs like it are adept at quickly snuffing out inflammation, they leave the body vulnerable to any bug it encounters, and they can come with toxic side effects. Okay, simply stopping inflammation is not enough to return tissue to its normal state, says Ruslan Metsitov. A professor of immuno, immuno, immunobiology at Yale School of Medicine, it's late. This approach ignores the other side of the inflammation coin, resolution. Resolving inflammation is an active, highly choreographed process for rebuilding tissue and removing the dead bacteria and cells. Remember, there's a whole like process. When things get inflamed, you swell up, you often create a bunch of dead cells. The body has to remove them, replace them, etc. When that process is disrupted, inflammatory diseases arise. In the early 2000s, researchers began to recognize the role of inflammation in conditions as varied as Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, prompting them to recast inflammation as the unifying explanation for a myriad of ailments, including those we develop as we age. Even aging itself and its associated pathology is driven by persistent inflammation. I know this sounds kind of like they're, they're putting a lot of this on inflammation, but they're right. One of the things that most people that I interact with who have physical impairments, it's inflammation. 
It's not the original thing that happened to them. It's the resulting pushing and squeezing and compressing and ah, all of a sudden they've got a nerve problem, a spinal problem, a bulging problem, a this problem. It's the inflammation that really is the thing that makes people unable to continue going forward. Imagine if you had a slip disc, right? But you didn't have inflammation and pain resulting from that inflammation. It would be lessened as to how much pain you'd likely feel. And PH, thank you again for the $5 donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Excellent. <clears throat> I got to catch up with you, by the way, about a topic we talked about back in the day. <clears throat> but I'm so overloaded right now because I just... I'm all tan and beat up and burnt because I just began the process of rebuilding a deck. In the early 2000s, uh, all right, so, okay, until relatively recently, we believed that inflammation just stopped, says Molly Gilligan. So this is like a, this what we thought it was this way for the longest time. An internal medicine resident at Columbia University who studies how the immune system impacts cancer development. Immunologists thought that products of inflammation Molecules that trigger it and dead cells and tissue are eventually metabolized or spontaneously dissipate on their own. The reality is more complicated and recognizes that could have game changing effects on how we treat a wide swath of diseases. So, what they're saying is if they can fix the whole life cycle of this swelling and inflammation so that your body can better adjust to it, not have it as bad, and when you have it, go ahead and get rid of the dead cells quickly to go ahead and replace them with new cells faster, then you're not going to be experiencing symptoms that are as extreme, which would then, of course, make people less disabled, which means that they could work as opposed to having to be on the program because they weren't be, wouldn't be as severely restricted. Why is inflammation dangerous? Inflammation evolved to serve an important function. It rids our bodies of stuff that doesn't belong, including foreign invaders like bacteria and viruses, tumor cells, and irritants like splinters in Russia. A classic example of inflammatory, inflammatory onset is the bee sting. The site becomes hot, red, swollen, and painful, like the motherland, says Derek Gilroy, a professor of immunology at University College of London. This response comes from a series of biological changes. Blood vessels dilate to deliver white blood cells <clears throat> to the site of the injury, making tissues turn red. Fluid also floods the site, causing swelling. The molecules that trigger these vascular transfer, transformations uh, uh, participate, uh, no, uh, sorry, wrong word. But anyways, they deal with the itching, pain, and fever associated with the inflammation. White blood cells, the body's first responders, right? That's your the ambulance is on the way, the white, uh, white blood cells, then swarm and kill the invaders. Under normal circumstances, this carnage is contained within the initial inflammatory response subsiding within 24 to 48 hours. When, inflammatory, uh, in, when inflammation becomes chronic, though, the chemical weapons deployed by frontline immune cells often damage healthy tissue, and our bodies become collateral damage. Sounds like a war report. The price exacted includes worn joints, damaged neurons, scarred kidneys, and more. Autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus characterized by pain and worsening disability have long been associated with persistent inflammation. You can hear the dogs in the background arguing over this exact same problem. Extreme cases, such as uh, problems associated with uh, sepsis or severe COVID-19, inflations can destroy and disable multiple organs, leading to catastrophic system failures and death. I had symptoms related to that whole COVID thing after having it for weeks after. What happens after inflammation? Okay, so uh, Mitzitov likens an infection, this is the person that, you know, is talking about it, to a broken pipe that has flooded an office with water. Fixing the pipe might stop water from streaming in, in, but it doesn't restore the office to its previous functional state. Similarly, inflammation has a cleanup phase known as resolution, and it proceeds in a series of highly coordinated steps. Here we go. Like inflammation's onset, its resolution is orchestrated by an army of signaling molecules. Among the most intensely studied are the specialized pro-resolving mediators, or SPMs, which were discovered in the 1990s by Charles Serum, a professor of anesthesia at Harvard Medical School. Serum was inspired by his postdoctoral mentor, Bengt Samuelson, who uncovered how fatty molecules, called lipids, trigger inflammation. 
Sarhan was searching for similar molecules when he identified uh, lipoxin. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But to his surprise, rather than exciting, or sorry, inciting inflammation, lipoxin or lipoxin seemed to hamper it. And then he made a medicine and made billions, right? That's all I was always good. <laughs> Over the next several years, Sarhan and his colleagues identified additional SPMs. These molecules are derived from essential fatty acids, such as those omega-3s famously found in cold water fish, like salmon and sardines. But they are difficult to study in the lab. One of the main challenges is that they have short half-lives, so the body metabolizes them very quickly, Gilligan says. I thought they were going to be like, well, we had to go to an island and study them on an island where nobody could be present. And then, of course, it, the person's name is Gilligan, so that helped my imagination take over. Because of this, researchers who work on them often turn to synthetic versions of the molecules, or mimetics, which are simpler, more stable, and cheaper to produce. Catherine Godson, a, oh, Rosa Soda, thank you, thank you for the donation. Uh, thank you for the $4.99 donation. Uh, indeed, indeed, again, love the little, uh, what is that? That's original NES controller, very cool. Um, excellent, excellent. Uh, so Catherine Godson, professor of molecular medicine at University College of Dublin, has long been interested in diabetes, given its impact on global public health as the most common cause of kidney failure. When she learned of SPM, she was excited by the idea of encouraging resolution to treat diabetics, a population with a particularly high risk for infection. Excellent. Wow. Thank you. Karen McDonald. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the $10 donation. I really, really appreciate it. Um, thank you guys, all of you guys, for the, the donations you've made. I, I really appreciate it. You know, I really, really appreciate it. Um, in mice with diabetic kidney disease, so remember mice, not humans, scarring from kidney inflammation gradually destroys the organ. Her team is testing the therapeutic potential of the lip, uh, lipoxin mimetic on these and other animal models. They've also looked at the mimetic's effects in human tissue and lab cell cultures taken from patients with these other inflammatory diseases of the blood vessel wall. In both cases, the inflammatory factors, uh, sorry, inflammatory factors plummeted when the mimetic was introduced. For the mice, the kidneys recovered their function and stunning reversal of established disease. So what they're saying here is they may have found a cure for inflammation, which may be a cure for a huge percentage of those who are currently disabled and unable to work. That's big. That's big. Let's keep reading. Gilroy notes, however, that the story on SPMs is incomplete. While lipoxins or lipoxins are present at levels in the body that indicate that they're important in resolution, other SPMs, such as resolvins, require more evaluation, he says. Yeah, they always say that. You know, you got to research it more, spend more money to figure out if it works, and then put it into a drug and make zillions. Manipulating uh, the following uh, macrophages. Um, scientists speculate that one way... Uh, Lipoxins and other pro-resolution molecules work is by interacting with immune cells called macrophages. I think they're pronounced that way. It could be macrophages, but I think it's macrophages. Remember, I don't remember the names of all these theoretical study terms for upcoming medicines that are coming out that may help somebody. But it sounds like they're on a good path here. Because they're so abundant during inflammation, macrophages have traditionally been thought of as pro-inflammatory cells, says Gerhard Kronk, an immunologist and rheumatologist at the University of Erlangen Nuremberg. Uh, but a paradigm shift in the last decade or so suggests that macrophages are pivotal players in the resolution of inflama uh, inflama inflammation. Gilroy agrees, calling macrophages linchpin cells at the juxtaposition of inflammation and resolution. It can go away, it can go one way if we're healthy, and the other way if we're not. Interesting. Initially, when the danger posed by invaders is at its peak, so like when the invaders have officially attacked the, the giant castle and they're doing their best, right? At that point, the macrophages drawn to the area are inflammatory, secreting pro-inflammatory uh, and amping up production of antimicrobial agents. But this balance shifts as the tide of the confrontation turns. After a number of the viruses declines, the debris, the debris left behind, viral remnants, Dead immune cells, another waste, must be collected and cleared away before it sparks another cycle of inflammation. That's when the microphages switch gears. Attracted by eat me signals expressed on the surface of dying cells, macrophages readily engulf and clear cellular corpses from the environment. But it's not just about clearing the wreckage. This act also flips a genetic switch, reprogramming macrophages to restore balance to the system and heal the tissues. Macrophages start to produce factors that tell the local tissue don't recruit any more infl inflammatory cells here. 
or let's proliferate and start repairs there. Uh, that was stated by Cody uh, Ravachandram, an Im immunologist at Washington University in St. Louis, whose research focuses on how dead cells are cleared from the body. Clearing away cellular debris. And this is important because like this is part two or the, you know, the, the end of the cycle of inflammation. When you get bloated and you inflame, you know, and inflammation occurs, it creates a bunch of dead cells. It's got to be a process to remove those dead cells. Here we go. Clearing away cellular debris. Now, consensus is building that many of the illnesses attributed to inflammation, both chronic and acute, can be traced to a failure in resolution. Often that translates into a failure to clear away dead cells. If you knock out receptors in the macrophages of mice that recognize dying cells, for example, they become incapable of eating up these cells, resulting in a lupus-like disease with symptoms such as arthritis and skin rash, says Crump. A similar mechanism is at work in older people, says Gilroy. As we age, our body loses a protein that recognizes dying cells. This blocks macrophages' ability to find and eat debris. Locked in a pro-inflammatory state, these macrophages continue to produce mole molecules that amplify the inflammatory, inflammatory response early on. Please remember, as I'm recording this video, I'm super tired and it is super late. So if I pronounced something wrong, my apologies. Perhaps COVID-19 has been more severe in older populations because they've lost some of the pro-resolution pathways with age, suggests Luke O'Neill, an immunologist at Trinity College Dublin. He notes that COVID-19, which kicked my butt, has also been problematic for people with genetic differences that impact immune function, resulting in, or I think my chair is going to break. I can feel it starting to break. That impact immune functions, resulting in overactive inflammatory responses or underactive pro-resolving ones. His group and others have demonstrated that macrophages prime for inflammatory inflammatory action play a significant role in critical COVID-19 cases, and they are currently testing pro-resolving strategies to combat this effect. Cancers, course two, the biggie, biggie, bigger than diabetes. Cancers, course two, is effective when inflammation fails to resolve. The soup of toxins, growth factors, and other inflammatory byproducts that accompany inflammation spurs cancer's growth and spread. Many conventional treatments end up exacerbating the problem, according to Deepak Mani Drakrahi, an assistant professor of pathology at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. I've been there. Uh, uh, chemotherapy and radiation are like sledgehammers. Uh, they may kill the tumor, but the debris that they create stimulates inflammation, which feeds circulating tumor cells that survive the treatment and make it into your lymphatic system, and then you become miserable. A decade ago, uh, this was a puzzling conundrum. When he met uh, this doctor, uh, when he met Sarah Hama at a conference on lipids in Cancun, Mexico, I just presented my research on cell death and cancer and how there's no way to clear the resulting debris. When I heard Sarah Hans talk about how he discovered these lipids that eliminated debris, he said, the two Boston-based researchers have shared a close collaboration ever since. And that's usually what happens. They go to these events, smart people hug smart people, and then we get miracle drugs or, you know, some version of that. In proof of concept, experiments conducted on mice. Uh, Panigraphy's group was able to prevent tumors from recurring after surgery by dosing the animals with emetics or resolvent. One of the pro-resolving mediators discovered in Serhan's lab, phase one cl clinical trials for pancreatic brain and colon cancers will begin this year. So like, just, just to, just to like put this in perspective, they're talking about curing the inflammation that allows cancer cells to more easily spread. And basically not allowing cancer to continue to grow once they've removed the tumor or shrunk the tumor. So what they're talking about here is like the preliminary beginnings of curing cancer, which is a big thing. That's like a, whoa, that's like, a, oh, you know, it's like in Star Trek when they don't just discover a new planet, but they discover a new planet with good food on it. That's a big thing. All right, here we go. Let's keep reading. All right, long COVID and inflammation. Although much work remains to decode its secrets, long COVID likely results from catastrophic failure of appropriate immune response and resolution. Meg St. Espert is part of a large cohort of COVID-19 survivors who continues to suffer symptoms months after the virus has passed. She and her family contracted the disease in November 2020. And for seven days, the mother of four in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, was beset by a high fever and severe headache. Debilitating fatigue, vertigo, and brain fog soon followed. But while her husband and children recovered, saying the spirit symptoms lingered and new ones emerged. Since her bout with COVID-19, she's developed blood clots 
and myocardial. Uh, Jesus, I can't even read right now. Sorry, dangerous consequences of inflammation. It's also as if her entire body has gone haywire. Different parts of it regularly flare up now. She says, my thumb joints swell to twice their normal size. My knees puff out like grapefruit, and I've had hives more times than I can count, which is you know, classic autoimmune response system where your body's attacking your body. Drugs to tweak the natural inflammatory process would thus be a powerful tool in our arsenal for long COVID as well. Even now, the hunt is on. O'Neill and colleagues, for example, are testing molecules in clinical trials that push macrophages to be pro-resolving. SPMs are being tested extensively in animal models of diseases like cancer and sepsis, and more modestly in small patient trials studying eczema and periodontal disease. I mean, that's good. I mean, you know, start with eczema. You know, hey. But Gilroy cautions that the answer may be more nuanced than anti-inflammatory versus pro-resolution, that drugs targeting both approaches may be needed. So just to split that up again, let's, that's an important. That's like a flip the whole article on its head. Let me read that one again. But Gilroy cautions that the answers may be more nuanced than anti-inflammatory versus pro-resolution, and that drugs targeting both approaches may be needed. It's like driving a car at full speed, he says. In order to stop, you take your foot off the accelerator, which would be like dampening inflammation's onset. And then you apply the brakes, or in other words, and the article ended right there. All right. So anyway, the point is this. I don't know what happened to the rest of the article, but the point is this is huge news. It's brand new. It's a week old. They're starting like trials for a lot of this stuff last year, this year, stuff like that. But this would essentially fix one of the major symptoms and problems and results of these big, bad, severe, extreme impairments. Inflammation, putting it simply, if you could if you could essentially cure inflammation, most people with physical impairments would be direct, happy, you know, resulting disabled people who could be pulled from the severe and extreme land back down to moderate, mild, and maybe even work a job. People inherently do not want to be on disability benefits. They want to be working a job, having a purpose, having a lot of money, etc. This logic, somebody who practices with a lot of people with physical impairments, this logic is on the right track. They're not approaching it as we're going to tackle this impairment. They're approaching it as they all share this same thing, this symptom, inflammation. And this inflammation is what causes people to experience the most severe version of dealing with that particular impairment. That's why this article is important. Anyways, guys, I have to go work on that horse contract because of the parents' farm and stuff like that. I will catch you later. Remember, please, please, please leave five-star reviews. Please like the video. Please ring the bell, hug the bell, kick the bell, whatever you want to do. And also, uh, just leave five-star reviews. Those are the things that help me the most with basically showing people that I care and put a lot of effort into this stuff. And even though I'm always tired and worn out, and you can see I have terrible you know, signs of being in an industry that underpays me so that I can't afford my student loans half the time, even though I'm in that, I just want to let you know, um, I really appreciate how you guys join me for these videos. And I really, really like that. Um, we have this time together, and I really appreciate that. I have to actually go catch up with Cheyenne real quick. Uh, I wish her a happy birthday. I'm going to go wish her a happy birthday again. You guys have a wonderful night. I'll catch you a little bit later, and we'll go from there. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.